You may wonder why scientists perform multiple trials of the same experiment, or why I have you performing multiple trials of the same experiment. The reason we do this is so that we can analyze our results and compare our trials. Now, what are we looking for when we compare our trials? We're going to be identifying two things, the accuracy of our experiment and the precision of our experiment. And in this video, I will explain what accuracy and precision are and how to determine the accuracy and precision of your results. So first, what is accuracy? Accuracy is the closeness of a measured value, so what you got, with the accepted value. So how close did you get to the correct answer? If you did multiple trials, you will average your trials and determine if that average is close to the accepted value. So take a look at this table. We are measuring the length of a table, and the actual length is 1.00 meters. For trial 1, you get 1.02 meters. For trial 2, you get 1.01 meters. And for trial 3, you get 0.99 meters. Now, none of these is 1.00 meters, but if we average them, they come close to 1.00 meters. So this is a very accurate experiment because your average is close to the accepted value. Now, precision is the closeness of a set of measurements to each other. So you need multiple measurements in order to determine the precision of your experiment. So we're going to measure that same table, it's 1.00 meters, and you get 1.37 meters, and then 1.38 meters, and then 1.37 meters. So none of these is anywhere close to 1.00. The average isn't close to 1.00, but they are close to each other. So this experiment has a high degree of precision, even though it's not accurate. One way to look at this and compare the difference between accuracy and precision, because often they get used interchangeably, but they do mean two different things, is think of a bullseye or a target. Now, in a target, you want, if you're shooting an arrow, you want to achieve the bullseye. And a scientist wants to get accurate results, so that bullseye is represents accuracy. Now, say we have six trials of something, and we have a high accuracy and high precision. All six trials are going to be close to each other, which will show high precision, and they're also going to be centered around the bullseye, which shows high accuracy. Let's take a look at the second target. We have high accuracy and low precision represented here. So you'll notice each of the six trials, they're not anywhere near each other. This would show low precision, but they're centered around the bullseye of the target. This shows high accuracy. Now, if I were to see an experiment with high accuracy and low precision, it would tell me that you probably had poor experimental technique, or maybe you were using instruments that weren't very precise. Now, on this third target, we are representing low accuracy, but high precision. So if you look at each of the six trials, they're all clustered together. That means they're all close to each other, so they're highly precise, but they're way off from the, tar from the center of the target, from the bullseye of the target. So they have low accuracy because they're away from the center, but high precision because they're close to each other. If I saw an experiment with low accuracy and high precision, it would tell me that maybe one of your pieces of equipment wasn't calibrated correctly. So maybe your balance wasn't calibrated or your thermometer had a bubble in it um, because you're off by the same amount every single time, but you took a lot of care in your measurements. Now let's take a look at this last example. You have low accuracy and low precision. This is a really bad experiment because your points aren't anywhere near each other and they're not near the center. They're not near the bullseye of the target. You would probably want to redo this experiment. 